We have Jim Davis with us today to talk about beneficial insects. Welcome, Jim. Hi, how are you? Hey, good. What are beneficial insects? <laughs> well, we have a, a lot of insects around the world. We have over like a million documented species of insects worldwide. You know, only a small fraction of that's actually harmful. But, you know, those other in insects, they affect us, you know, indirectly or directly, you know. Some insects, um, such as honeybees, are very important, very important to us. You know, we, you know, we'd be in bad shape without them. We would them. not have fruits with them. <laughs> That's fruits right. And vegetables. Yeah. That's right. You know, we have other insects out there. You know, such as flies that break down the their larvae, break down organic matter and such. But you know, we commonly refer to as beneficial insects in our field as those that um, provide pest management uh, in any type of agricultural crop. So this can be in, like in your vegetable crops or in your, you know, your landscape ornamentals. Um, so this is. You know, this is what we consider as, you know, beneficial insects. Well, what are some examples then? <laughs> There's a lot out there, you know, and this first slide is probably the most common insect, beneficial insect around, you know, and that's the praying mantis. Oh, yes, those yeah. are good to see. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty cool. And uh, so there's a couple of them on this slide that you'll see, and, you know, we have some native to Florida, and they pretty much, um, you know, hang around and pretty much stalk the prey and feed on them. And, uh, you know, this other slide, um, these are insects people are probably not too familiar with. You know, on the upper left hand, this is my, one of my favorite beneficial insects. This is the green lacewing. Oh, they're beautiful. It's absolutely yes. gorgeous insect. You'll see it, you know, at night. So if you have lights at night, they'll be, you know, right next to it. And uh, the one on the right is called the brown lacewing. Not as common as the green lacewing, but, you know, they're both very um, beneficial insects. Actually, they're larvae. Um, one of the first larvae to uh, get on plants to eat pests such as aphids and a lot of times you know um, homeowners say or bring in plants and they wonder what these little eggs are on strings yes I was gonna say their eggs are very distinctive very distinctive and on the lower left hand side this is what they look like and they'll be under branches um, some people one person brought in like a, a like a mower belt you know they were on his mower and stuff <laughs> like that so um, these are a couple of examples and uh, this next slide is uh, uh, that of a lady beetle or a ladybug. Now, ladybugs are, you can buy those in the stores. <laughs> you can buy them. <laughs> but just remember that whenever you buy them, you know, um, they're going to go away. Well, they're not native they're ones not, that are they're available in the store. They're from California, correct? Exactly. And their first instinct, whenever the, whenever the weather warms up, whenever you release them, their first instinct is to migrate. You know, go back first, to California? To go back. <laughs> so your neighbors will like it, but they're not going to stay in your yard. So, you know, just consider that when buying them. This is one of uh, many species. We actually have over 98 species of ladybugs in Florida, some native, some introduced, be it, uh, you know, um, accidental or intentionally. Uh, this is a twice-stabbed ladybug feeding the on two some... two red spots. Yeah, I love that one. <laughs> and um, feeds primarily on scale. And, uh, but, you know, on the lower right, most people see this and they think it's a caterpillar feeding on their plant. Um, many people are surprised to see that's a baby ladybug. And the baby ladybugs actually eat more of your they eat more. pests than, than the adults do. Exactly right. You know, the babies always uh -huh. eat more. <laughs> so, you know, this guy is actively feeding on beneficials. So, you know, whenever you see this guy around, leave him alone. And uh, so those are some of the examples of, um, you know, some of the many beneficial. But, you know, many people are familiar with stink bugs, right? Yes. You know, we have predator stink bugs, which look almost identical to the pest. Uh, but these feed primarily on, you know, caterpillars. And in, you know other you know arthropods such like that. So, um, and then we also have uh, in lawns like St. Augustine grass. You know people have a big problem with chinch bugs, right? Yes. Um, there's another bug out there that's commonly misidentified for a chinch bug, and it's called big-eyed bug. Yes, and those are good bugs. Those are beneficial yeah. not only in not only in St. Augustine grass, but also agricultural crops as well. And you know you can tell the difference because it has two big eyes on it. <laughs> you know, and uh, earwigs. A lot of Those think, are actually good. Yes, many of your species of earwigs are beneficials. Um, so there's a lot of insects out there um, that are uh, doing their job in the landscape. If we're not sure about that, can we take a sample into the plant clinic and Absolutely. have it identified? Absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, my <laughs> office, I'll show you a whole bunch of them. I, have, <laughs> I collect a whole bunch of insects and stuff like that. So uh, we can show you the difference between what the pests look like and what the beneficials looks like. Now, is there any way we could purchase the beneficials? Though? You can. There's different places online that you can order beneficials. Um, uh, some of the ones that I mentioned, like the, the predator sink bugs, are very good to introduce in your yard. But, you know, ones like, you know, you, like we said, the ladybugs, 
you know, they're going to go away. They can. People like to buy praying mantis, mm -hmm. um, praying mantids, and uh, you'll get a whole bunch of them hatching. But uh, just keep in mind, you know, some of these insects are carnivorous, <laughs> and they're going to eat each other oh, until yeah. there's only one. <laughs> so you'll have a whole, you know, have probably you know, 50 praying mantises, and they're all going to eat each other until one left. Well, you got to spread them out. Make sure you yeah, you got to spread them out. So, yeah, you can purchase them uh, if you like, and but just remember, you know, you got to have the bad bugs to have the good bugs. And also, there's a lot of shipping and handling involved in a live organism, mm -hmm. getting it there in a, in a good state. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because they can die very easily. They can. From the conditions in transit. Absolutely. absolutely. So, uh, is anybody producing natural native um, predators, or do we have to just kind of encourage those on our own? <laughs> well, I'm sure there are some people who are producing, you know, producing natural natives and stuff like that, but uh, it's pretty much, you know, you can actually attract a lot of these beneficials yourself um, using the right plants. Um, you know, we have a couple, and you know, many, these are considered ornamental plants, you know, but this is, a, this is called a rosin weed, okay? This is a Florida native wildflower. Rosin weed? Rosin weed. This is my favorite plant. It's not, I mean, it looks like a brown-eyed Susan that's not brown-eyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. It's about three to four feet tall. Oh. Flowers year-round. It just does awesome in our office. And this morning I picked it, and there were several parasitoid wasps on it, hoverflies, flies, all these good guys flying around because the adults, they feed on um, the nectar, on plants, on flowering plants. Um, so it's important to have these. And this is marjoram. This is a herb, so people like herb gardens. Um, Hold it up a little higher. Let's sure. See. And, marjoram? Oh, yes. This, is, this had the most of any in our office this morning. Um, they were flying all over the place. And this is also another great one. People like to plant bottle brush. That's also a great plant for a lot of parasitoid wasps. Um, bottle so brush, that's a shrub or a small tree? That's a bottle tree. brush, is just a shrub or small tree. And, you know, uh -huh. we were talking earlier about um, you'll plant hollies or holly trees. Hollies flower, and then you get a lot of beneficials attracted to them. So if you see them, don't spray them. You know, let them be. Whenever it gets done flowering, they'll go away and do their, you know, do their thing. Are there other beneficial predators in the landscape that, that we can attract yes, in? Yes, there are. This next slide is, uh, I'm not a big spider person. But uh, there are like them much either. But my dad would never let us kill them because they ate cockroaches. Absolutely, you know, a lot of good spiders out there. This is one I took a picture at my house. This is a green link spider, and uh, probably one of the most beneficial um, spiders out there. You know, and I guarantee it, it's probably out in your landscape. And uh, so we have these guys. We have um, beneficial mites. Um, oh, yes, that we're, we're going growing. to be growing, yeah. and the extension offices are going to be releasing to people coming in with the pest problem they will Absolutely. address. Absolutely. You're growing yeah. them, I'm growing <laughs> them. And so a beneficial mite, so if you have a white, white fly problem, you know, we'll be able to give those out, and they'll disperse and naturally feed on the vegetables, or not naturally feed on the white flies mm -hmm. um, without you having to spray a chemical on it. Um, so it's a lot more environmentally friendly. Well, are there other places we can go to get more information? Absolutely. You know, the best site to go is solutionsforyourlife.com. And then just type in a search for beneficial insects you can or predatory there's a insects? Great, there's a great publication called Beneficial Insects uh, and Spiders. Um, and uh, it's on the solutionsforyourlife.com website. And it's a, it'll give you all the basics on the different types of common beneficial insects out there. Oh, very good. And they can also always go to their local extension oh, office <laughs> and find out details. Absolutely. Any of the plant links that we have for identification um, that you have would be good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you.